great revival in my soul. Send the great revival in my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. And send the Holy revival in my soul. My brain's not working very good. Turn me up a little bit, please, Gary. I feel like I'm not loud enough and I can't push anymore, so... We'll do it. Let's stand, let's sing that chorus. Send a great revival in my soul. This time I'll try to read the words, okay? I'll even take my glasses off so I can see it. Ready? Send a great revival in my soul. Send a great revival in my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. I'd send a great revival in my soul. All right, we're going to work on the verses to that and later on. I've got, I've got to make sure I have the words down first, all right? Turn to page number 56. Page number 56, when we all get to heaven. Page number 56. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. His mercy and His grace In the mansion bright and blessed Prepare for us a place When we all get to heaven Day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus Sing and shout the victory Will overspread the sky, but when traveling days are over, a shadow not a sign. When we all get to heaven, day of rejoicing that will be. us, his beauty will be whole, soon the pearly gates will open, shall tread the streets of gold, when we all get to heaven, of rejoicing that will be, when we all see Jesus, sing and shout the Page number two, glory to his name. Page number two. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abide within. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of pride. Glory to Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast up her soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. To his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. 
light. Glory to His name. Amen. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank you this evening for your blessings. And Lord, as we uh, open the service this evening, Lord, we sang, Send a Great Revival in My Soul. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would work in our hearts and work in our lives, Lord, that you'd, you would send a great revival in our hearts, and uh, Lord, that we'd see a mighty change that would take place within us individually, and Lord, uh, our church collectively, and then, uh, Lord, may the spark, the flame, uh, be fueled, Lord, by the, the prayers uh, uh, of your people, Lord. The Bible says, uh, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much, and Father, we pray that uh, the revival fires would spread through our city, uh, surrounding areas, into, our, into Houston, uh, across the state of Texas. Lord, it all begins uh, with one person uh, getting on fire for you, Lord. It just takes one spark uh, to ignite, Lord, a flame and a fire that would uh, uh, go out through the world. So, Father, we just pray for that tonight. Pray, Father, that you would uh, uh, work in our hearts. I pray, Father, that you would... Uh, uh, bless tonight, Lord, as we bring the word of God, that you'd speak to our hearts and help us, encourage us tonight. Uh, again, we thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Appreciate you being here tonight. It's a great blessing to have all of you. I know uh, this morning we were down a little bit. We have some that are out sick. Uh, it is spring break. <laughs> it is spring break. I would, thought I would get more more amens and uh, more hallelujahs and glory al uh, deals and uh, everything else with all the staff that we have here. I mean, come on. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you, get, get, not having to go to school for a whole week is, is going to be uh, thrilling to me. Uh, but uh, it's a blessing uh, to have spring break. And then a, couple, a few weeks later, then we get to get out for Friday and Monday, uh, for Good Friday and Good Monday. You say, what's good about it? <laughs> we're out of school. <laughs> That's what's good about it. And uh, so uh, uh, then we're winding on down. We're getting close to the end of, uh, uh, of May now, and we're going to get out of school. I'm sorry for you folks that uh, go to Goose Creek and, uh, and other districts outside of uh, uh, Lighthouse Baptist Academy. If you were right with God, you'd be working for us, and uh, you'd get the same days we get. But uh, we'll get out at the end of, uh, uh, of May. And before Memorial Day weekend, and uh, so uh, uh, Lord willing, and uh, no major disasters that take place between now and uh, uh, the end of May. Now, if anything happens between now and the end of May to prevent us from getting out of school on time, Brother Scott, I'm gonna be looking for you because <laughs> he's one of those going to have to go into June. <laughs> So uh, I, I know what you people are thinking, but uh, anyway, uh, it, it's exciting to see what God's doing, God's working, and just continue to pray. Uh, I, I will share with you today was our God is able offering, and uh, at the end of the service, I'll tell you. <laughs> Sitting out here on pins and needles, huh? Good. Well, I'm just thinking this will keep you awake until the end of the service. Uh, uh, anyway, but uh, no, we, uh, we, did, we have done well so far. Uh, we do have some that are out that, uh, that we're not here today. Uh, but so far, now this is just the God is able offering. It's not regular tithe. This is just the God is able offering and realizing that there's some that are out that, that would have put in this morning but we're not here. Uh, Twelve thousand seven hundred and forty dollars, and uh, so that, that's a great victory and a great blessing. And uh, just uh, I've had folks say, "What, what are you going to do with that?" Well, <laughs> uh, I've had folks say, "Brother uh, uh, Lamb, I have your money." I'm going, I, you know, go ahead and give it to me. But when God is able to offer and come up, you put that in for the Lord uh, because it's not my money. I, I, I get none of it. Uh, but uh, we've got a lot of things around here that need to be done. Uh, we have. Uh, 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 always something that needs to be done. And uh, so we just pray that the uh, Lord will supply it and multiply it. We've got, uh, I mean, if, if I sat here and just enumerated, you're going to go, where's all, that, uh, where's all that money going? And I can, I can tell you it's just about gone uh, before we get it because, uh, you know, our goal is to, uh, to reach the loss for Christ. And uh, 
I mean, we've got to order more tracks. We've got to order more outreach. We've got to order and order, and it's just, you know, it's just always going. But uh, if we uh, reach anybody with the gospel of Jesus Christ, every dime, every dollar uh, that's put in the offering plate is for the glory of God. And uh, last week we had two saved. This week we had two saved. Uh, and so uh, uh, that, that didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. And uh, so just be in prayer for that, if you will. Uh, a couple of other things before we uh, continue on. Uh, we have our Highland Soul Winning on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Uh, meet over here in the cafeteria, fellowship hall, slash multi-use uh, building, uh, slash anything you want to call it. Uh, but we meet there at 10 o'clock on Saturday mornings. And then we go out into Highlands and knock doors and uh, get the gospel out there. Uh, just praying that God would open doors, open hearts as we uh, share the gospel. Uh, we had some good visits yesterday. We had some not so good visits yesterday. Uh, but we had, I think it was 12 that were out uh, knocking doors yesterday. And, and that's a great blessing. I appreciate you, all of you that came and did that. And so do continue to pray for that. Uh, also, our Sword of the Lord conference is coming up. Dr. Shelton Smith and Dr. Uh, Hamlin, John Hamlin, and uh, it'll be May 11, 12, and 13, and uh, of course, uh, it's always a great time, great conference, and so do be in prayer for that, and then our missions conference is coming up in October. You say, why are you putting that way out front? Well, because missions conference is coming up in October. <laughs> you say, well, yeah, we, we need to understand that missions is the forefront of our church. And if we have no outreach, then we have no church because we're not doing what God's asked us to do. And uh, so our missions conference is October the 15th through the 19th. Brother Jimmy Banks uh, will be coming to preach for us. You say, well, uh, who's he? He's a preacher. He pastors uh, Lighthouse Baptist uh, Church in Columbus, Mississippi. If you'd like to hear him preach before he comes, you're welcome to go to Lighthouse Baptist uh, uh, Church Columbus. Uh, dot com and uh, listen to him preach uh, tonight his son is preaching I said uh, he commented on there that his son was preaching tonight and I asked if it was going to be live stream so we could watch it and uh, he says yeah but if you listen to him you may cancel me and I said well we may just have a father son duo during that time so uh, but uh, uh, anyway do be in prayer for them and also the messages that God would work uh, in the hearts and lives all right uh, again we appreciate you being here thank you so much for coming with Steve. Turn to page number 194. Page number 194. Let's all stand. Since Jesus came into my heart. 194. <laughs> came into my heart I have lied in my soul which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart what the joy or my soul to see billows Jesus came into my heart, and my sins, which were many, are all washed away. Came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, but the joy for my soul. Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy as onward I go, says Jesus, my heart, since Jesus into my 
heart Since Jesus came into my heart Joy o'er my soul The sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart Turn to page number 29 Page number 29, we'll ask the men to come forward and see the offering on the last course. Page number 29. Alas, and did the Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote? Sacred head for such a worm as I At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light The burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight Now I am happy all the day Was it for crime? I have done, he groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, first saw the light, the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now I am happy all the day. A drop of grief and every pain, the dead of the my own. Here, Lord, I give myself away to all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now I am happy all the day. Man, as we uh, receive the offering this evening, just reminding you that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And as you give, you've, uh, this is our, for our missions program, our missions projects. We uh, support somewhere in the vicinity of about 50 to 54 uh, different works, as well as uh, missionaries that we support, church planners, uh, all that we do. And for a church our size, that's probably um, uh, more than uh, most would do. But if you have a desire to see, the soul, see souls saved and lives changed, it's not too much is not too much. Every, uh, every soul that's won is to your account as you give to missions, and it's, it's all uh, for the glory of God. And by the way, I remind you that uh, no matter what you, you leave in the bank account, when you expire and leave this world, uh, it's not going with you. Amen. And 99% of the time it's left to kids uh, who are uh, less than um, uh, caring about what, how, the money that you scrimped and saved for. Uh, and they'll get it and waste it, and it'll be gone in a short time. Or they'll sit there and fight over and ruin relationships and ruin lives. So just we'll go ahead and give it now. Let them worry about it and uh, worry about how they're going to do something and uh, just allow it to be used for God's glory. All right? As we bow for prayer uh, this evening, receive the offering. Brother uh, Richard Priest, you lead us in prayer, please. Father, once again we come to you this evening with a humble heart. Thank yes, you Lord. for the service this morning, Lord, and the lives we've seen saved this morning, Lord. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, to this uh, offering we had this morning, Lord, that uh, you still multiply it and use it for the furtherance of your service. Yes, Lord. Lord, just uh, help Brother Liam discern which is the right way to go. Yes, Lord. And same way with this offering, Lord, we just ask you to uh, give us the wisdom to use it in your honor and glory. Now, Father, we lift up uh, the lamb to you this evening. Just 
hide him behind the cross one more time and uh, pray, Heavenly Father, that we've all come with a heart ready to hear and listen and absorb what your word says to us. Yes. And Father, we just ask you now to bless each and every one of us and uh, maybe when we get through here this evening, Lord, leave and say it's been great to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. It's all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Take your Bibles, turn to Joshua, Joshua chapter number 6, Joshua chapter number 6, air conditioner. I'm not really helping Brother Steve get off the platform. I 
I'm hot. Joshua chapter number 6, I want to speak to you this evening on the subject, hindrances to God's work, hindrances to God's work. Joshua chapter number 6, I invite you to stand with me in the reverence of the reading of the word of God. We'll read uh, verses 1 through 8 this evening and bring the message, hindrances to God's work. Joshua chapter 6, verse number 1 says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Let me stop here and just say that if you've read the first few verses uh, of the uh, book, you'll find that when the children of Israel came across the Jordan River, uh, that the nations of the Amorites and, and all, they were uh, in uh, much distress because of the children of Israel. Uh, because they had heard the works of God, and they had heard that God was, uh, was fighting the battles for the children of Israel. And uh, so uh, when they heard that the children of Israel were in Gilgal, uh, they just closed the gates, closed the city, and basically the city of Jericho was impregnable. Uh, you couldn't get in. <laughs> and, uh, but that's nothing for God. And so uh, we'll continue reading. Verse number 2, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all of you, men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear the tr before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they... Uh, make a long blast with the ram's horns, and uh, when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant. And let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord, and blew with the trumpet, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them." Let's pray. Fathers, we bow before you this evening. Lord, I pray that you'd work in our hearts and our lives tonight. Lord, we're seeing, uh, Lord, a semblance of a move of the Spirit of God uh, upon the hearts of our people. Uh, Lord, we're seeing uh, tears within the, uh, the, the congregation during the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, Lord, we're seeing that uh, conviction is beginning to fall uh, upon the hearts and lives of your people. And Lord, these are just a, uh, an echo, just a, a quiver, maybe just a, uh, a sign, Lord, that you're about to move greatly within uh, the confines of the Garth Road Baptist Church. Father, I pray, uh, Lord, that uh, you'd help us tonight to learn from the Word of God uh, how that we can keep these, uh, these fires uh, uh, being going and uh, continue to go and uh, fan them, Lord, that, uh, that we would not hinder, uh, Lord, the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart and the life of our people. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. As you recall the story of, uh, uh, of Jericho, and if you uh, remember the story of Joshua fighting uh, the battle of Jericho, we, uh, we, this is probably one of uh, the familiar stories in the Bible. Of course, our agnostics and our atheists and uh, the liberals who do not believe the Bible to be the Word of God say it never happened. Historically, it did happen. Historically, it did happen. Not only because the Word of God says so, but histor historically, it happened. Amen. All right? And so, uh, regardless of what the liberals and the agnostics and the uh, atheists and all want to tell you, this is a story that's based upon the truth of the Word of God. And as we look at uh, this uh, account today, uh, what we need to understand is, is that God had a plan for the children of Israel. God had a plan for the children of Israel. Amen. Now, God revealed his plan to Joshua. God revealed his plan so that Joshua would know exactly what was going to transpire. 
It, it wasn't a surprise to them. It wasn't a shock to them. It wasn't that uh, they didn't know what was happening because God specifically outlined to them what they were going to do. It was evident by the reaction of the peoples that lived in those areas that God was doing a great thing. It was evident. Because when we read in the Word of God, the people trembled. They were afraid they, that there was fear on every side uh, from the Amorites and those that dwelled in that area because they had heard exactly what God had done. They had heard what God had done to the children of Israel or for the children of Israel and bringing them out of Egyptian bondage. He, they had heard about the, the God uh, following them in a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. They, uh, they had seen the, uh, the making of the tabernacle of God and the setting up of the, ar- uh, of the tabernacle of God and the, the building of the, of the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, they, had, they had seen and they had heard and uh, probably uh, had even heard about the, uh, some of the other things that had taken place and, uh, it, within the tribes of the children of Israel. They knew about God feeding them uh, with the manna and with the quail and, and the other things that happened when the children of Israel rebelled against God and, and he sent fiery serpents and they bit them and, uh, and, they, and many died, but when they put the, the brass serpent upon the pole and lifted it up uh, into, in the camp, then those that looked were saved and they didn't die uh, from the bite of the serpents. And, I mean, they, they had heard all of these stories. They had seen the accounting. Uh, they, they had witnessed and probably had uh, folks uh, coming through and telling the uh, miraculous stories of how God had worked in the hearts and the lives of the children of Israel. And so as we come here, they've come across the Jordan River, and now they are, uh, have uh, set up a camp in the city of Gilgal. Now in Gilgal, there, there are several different uh, uh, ideas about what that name men, means. In, in Joshua chapter number 5, it means a rolling off. Uh, the children of Israel came across the, the uh, Red Sea, and the, uh, the bondage and all that was on them had been rolled off by God. If you look at uh, uh, Joshua chapter number 5, verse number 9, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plain of plains of Jericho. Now, uh, God had rolled away the reproach. If you continue reading, you'll find uh, that they began to eat the corn of the land. Uh, they began to uh, experience uh, uh, the blessings of God as his provision uh, aside from the manna. Now, you do realize that the children of Israel uh, were tired of manna. Manna in the morning. Manna in the evening. Manna in the noontime. <laughs> I mean, there was manna and manna and manna. That's why they complained so much. I mean, they were eating angels' food. <laughs> you didn't hear the angels complain about that. It's, it's kind of like uh, today we had roast for lunch. Now, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a roast fan. I mean, I, 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 I'm sorry we had roast <laughs> every Sunday. Coming up, as long as I was at home, we had roast every Sunday. And... Uh, uh, not only did we have roast, but I attributed the roast with the English peas. And the only thing worse than roast every Sunday is English peas. All right? And so, and, and not only that, but mom thought that uh, when you took the bread and, and, and took the light bread and she broke it up and she poured that, uh, uh, that uh, I don't know what you call it, pot liquor or you call it whatever it is, uh, the gravy that's on there, she poured on that bread and they stuff it on my plate and fix my plate and put it on the table. And I hear, I hear y'all go, oh man, glory, glory on Dios, and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you, I hate soggy bread. I'm not a fan of roast. I hate English peas, and I don't like soggy bread. Now, <laughs> we need revival. Now, the, the truth is, we had to, and, and, and I don't care for that. Now, some people had, uh, had uh, uh, pinto beans and, and rice all the time. Now, we didn't have that because we didn't have rice. My mother didn't like rice. I wish she didn't like English peas either, but she didn't like rice, so we didn't have rice. We always had potatoes. Now, I have no problem with, it, with uh, pinto beans and, and cornbread and, and potatoes. I mean, that, that's good stuff. Onions, you know, that, that's good stuff. But, you know, in your life, you probably remember that something that y'all had over and over and over again, and if I took a poll, somebody would raise their hand and say, I don't like. 
Now, I can, I can just about tell you what it is that Brother Steve don't like. Tuna casserole. Can I get a witness? <laughs> tuna casserole. They had tuna casserole in the morning, and they had it in the evening, and they had it at the noontime. I mean, they had tuna casserole. That was one of the staples that they had. Now, folks, we, we want to criticize the Jews for not liking the manna. Okay? <laughs> but we're bad as they are. Okay? Now, stop and consider. Now, now, folks, God provided for them abundantly. But when they came across the Jordan River, and they came into Gilgal, and they, and they set up camp, and they set up the tabernacle, and they set everything in place, God took the manna away. And now they were eating the good of the land. God rolled away the reproach of Egypt. And now they were in God's land, God's provision, God's direction, God's blessing. Now, stop and consider this for just a moment. Now, as we look at this, God says, now, you're not going to fight the battles. You're going to take the land. I am going to fight the battles. And so when we come to the city of Jericho, that, it, that uh, the, the walls were thick, the gates were, were uh, impregnable, so to speak, they went in, the Jericho, Jerichoans? I don't, I invented a new word maybe, I don't know. The people of Jericho, <laughs> I'll put it that way, locked themselves in because they had heard about God. And they didn't want to become a statistic. They didn't want to, hey, we're safe inside here. <laughs> they can't get into us. Of course, they can't get out either. <laughs> How are you going to get provision? How are you going to get water? How are you going to get, you know. But, then think about all that. So here they are. Now, I can imagine these men of Jericho, these warriors, these men of valor, sitting upon that wall, watching these Israelis, these Israelites, walking around the city. Here's seven priests with trumpets. Here's the Ark of the Covenant. Here's all the, the, the soldiers behind them. And they're following, and, and they're walking around the city, and they get around the city, one complete uh, circle, and they go back to Gilgal, and they make camp. And they do that for six days in a row. And I'm sure that these people in Jericho are going, that is the strangest battle plan I've ever seen in my life. But more strange than that was they come out on the seventh day and they marched around the city seven times. Man, these guys don't have nothing else better to do. It must be spring break. Walking around the city. Here they go, seven times. But what they didn't count on was God. And God went in as, they, as the, uh, a, 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 on that seventh time, the, the priest blew the trumpets. The people yelled. And the walls came tumbling down. They went in and they, they found Rahab and, and those that were within her house and, and brought them out. And, and they did exactly what God told them to do. Now, this, number one, was God's plan. This was the plan of God. It, it, was, uh, it was his demand on what to do. However, in his instruction to the children of Israel, he told them, when you go in, don't take nothing out. Rahab, those within her house, you bring out. Take no spoil. Take no spoil. Now, the problem came when Achan went in and looked. And he saw gold there. And, and he saw the Babylonian garments. And, and, and he saw these things. And, and so Achan defaulted on God's plan. And he took what God said not to take. And he went and he hid it in his tent. Thinking, 
Everything's all right. Don't have to worry about it. Now, the children of Israel, I mean, they're, they're up on a mountain now. Can you imagine these walls is so thick that, uh, that, that they were impregnable, you couldn't get through them? And, I mean, just think about it. And all these walls, I mean, and they're thinking, man, God is so good and God is so great. And they're up there on that mountaintop and they're singing praises to God. I mean, it's glorious. I said, you know, last, the last two weeks we've had folks saved in our service. And our people are excited about that. Amen. I mean, I'm excited about that. I'm thrilled about that. I mean, God is working. God is blessing. I mean, this is God's desire. This is God's demand that we go out into the world and, reach the, and preach the gospel to every creature as souls be saved, lives be changed. That's God's demand. That's God's desire. That's, that's God's commandment for you and I to go out and do this. And God is blessing. We're not seeing the people that we're knocking doors for coming in, but we're seeing handfuls on purpose. We're seeing God send folks in to hear the gospel, to respond to the gospel, and to get saved. Amen. Now, that's God's desire. I, I mentioned Jimmy Banks a while ago, and, and somebody said, well, why, do you, why, do you, why did you invite him to come preach our missions conference? Well, I, I think he has a pretty good track record as a pastor. 67 weeks in a row, and possibly 68, because I haven't found out today uh, how many folks were saved in his church today or this week, but... 67 weeks in a row with people walking the aisle making decisions. Now, that's a pretty good track record. I, I think a man like that has something to say <laughs> that we need to hear. I, I, I care nothing for the evangelist that comes in that hadn't won anybody to Christ. Let me, uh, let me say that again. I care nothing for the evangelist that comes in and has won nobody to Christ that want to preach, wants to preach us and tell us how to do it. He hadn't done it. I, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in the missionary that's going to the mission field that has yet to win anybody to the Lord Jesus Christ right here on American soil. Yeah, I, I'm not interested in that. But when I hear about a man of God that, that's pastoring a church in, in an area in, in Mississippi, I'm, I mean, you have to understand, Mississippi is not like Texas. You, most of you look like, I mean, like a calf looking at a new gate. You've probably never been there. Mississippi is not like Texas. I mean, it's a totally different world over there. I mean, tell you, it's different. And here is a church in central Mississippi that's growing and has, that runs over three to 400 people. God's blessing. A, a guy from Louisiana, so to speak, <laughs> moves to Mississippi and begins to build a church. God's doing something. But you see, the problem is, we're seeing God's blessing. But if we detract from that, if we're like Achan and we, and we default on the plan of God, God is not going to bless. Now, Achan took the gold and he took a Babylonian garment. Something of value. But the, the condemnation, if you look at chapter number 7, the condemnation was not on Achan himself. Notice what he says in verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. The entire populace were judged because of one man. One man. Think about that. God's blessing. God's doing the work. God is, 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 is showing uh, his glory and his mercy and his grace to a people that he, he didn't choose them because they were great in number, the Bible says. He chose them because he loved them. And yet they were disobedient to them, to God, in this, in this area. You see, if we are unfaithful, and do not do what God had desires us to do as a church, he's not going to bless us. He's, he's not going to, going to bless us and allow us to continue to go forward and continue to see people come in if we are going to take the stand, hey, the, uh, I, I, it's, it's okay, I can do it myself. 
God's not going to let us do that. God's not going to allow us to, to influence and to infect other people not to serve him. We have to be very, very, very careful in this area. You see, this morning, we're, I'm excited. We're, I mean, we're coming in. We've got, we, we've got uh, 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 I mean, the offer's coming up. We've got, uh, uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's time change Sunday. It looked like it, from Sunday school there wasn't nobody coming because nobody set their clock ahead. A few set them backwards. Which the ones that set it backwards is not a problem. It's the ones that didn't set it backwards was the problem. And then someone comes to me and just before I preach and deflates me. Has a complaint. Has a I mean folks, if, if you have a complaint, wait till it's over with. Wait till you see the glory of God. Wait till you see the blessings of God. Wait till you see what God's going to do in the service that day before you have a complaint about something that I said or something that I did or something that I'm, I may, might do somewhere else. You see, the problem was is that Achan took his eyes off of God and he got his eyes on the things of the world and he got in, involved in the things of the world. I'm sure there was some, some com that could complain that we went to almost 1 o'clock today. <laughs> hey, it's all right. Amen. If there was one more soul, and there was another soul in here that was crying out and, and needed to get saved, and, and, and I mean, if I had to stay here till 3 o'clock and that person would have walked the aisle and would have taken the Bible, and so, I mean, I would have been here till 3 o'clock. But don't complain about that. <laughs> because that person may have left this service, and this per that person may have died on the way home and never have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior life and split hell wide open. I don't want to be the hindrance there. I don't want to be the one that's, that's, that's preventing someone from getting saved. That's why I said, you're, when these folks raise their hand and say they need to be saved and, and all that, I said, folks, y'all need to pray. Amen. You need to pray. And as soon as I said that, folks stepped out. I said, Brother Joey, back to talk to one, and, uh, and, and then weeping, he, he, he said, no. The Spirit wouldn't just let me leave it alone. And I went back there, and I, I had prayer with him. I said, look, I said, you know what you need to do. Yeah, I know. But he, he just couldn't do it. Folks, what we need to understand is we don't need to be a hindrance to the work of God. You see, when we get our eyes on the materialistic things of this world, when we get our eyes on where we're going to spend the money, and we're going to get our eyes on, the, on what we're going to do with the money, and, and why do we have to have the money, and all, when we start focusing on those types of things, something's wrong. We, we've lost the focus. We've lost what we need to do. Let, let's get our eyes off of the money, because the money is irrelevant. It's whether or not God's going to bless it's whether or not souls are going to be saved. If we're not going to be interested in reaching the lost for Christ, if we're not interested in going out there and knocking on the doors in Highlands, if we're not interested out there in, in buying tracts and buying uh, 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 pamphlets and, and ink and whatever we need to do to print and to get out on the Internet and to get out and, and the message out uh, into the world, if we're not interested in that, let's just go ahead and write Ichabod across the door, close the door, padlock the door, and go on down the road and sell out to the Pentecostals because we're not going to do what God has asked us to do. We've got to stand when God says stand, and we've got to do what God says do, and we need to put off the side the, this, this mental idea that we've got to have control of every little act aspect of our life and every little aspect of what goes on at the house of God. Hey folks, we need to be doing what God wants us to do, not what man wants us to do. Amen. You see, what happened is God had a desire, God had a demand. Achan defaulted on that plan. Israel, Israel themselves were defeated. If you read the story, and I hope you'll go back and read the book of Joshua, but when you go, when you go back to, to read the story, in this particular place, the children of Israel, they had great victory in that the walls came down and everything happened exactly the way God said was. But then they go, well, there's this little town over here. It's called Ai. You don't have to worry about Ai. It's just a small town. We, we can take about 3,000 soldiers. 
We'll be, we'll be okay. We, we don't have to take all these people here. See, pride got involved. See, it, it, it wasn't Jim Lamb or his preaching or Brother Kevin singing or Brother Steve singing that brought people down the aisle. It was the Holy Spirit of God. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't Joshua and his, and his uh, 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 military maneuvering and his military prowess. It, it wasn't Joshua that brought those walls down. It wasn't the, the priest that brought those walls down. It wasn't the, uh, those that were bearing the Ark of the Covenant that brought those walls down. It wasn't the men of valor that were follow, following along with their swords and waiting for the walls to fall down. It wasn't them that brought those walls down. It was God that brought those walls down. And the only way that those walls were coming down was a move of God. Period. And the only way people are going to be saved in the Garth Road Baptist Church or any other church is by a move of God. But when we begin to move in and begin to hinder, God pulls back. And then we think, well, I, I got this. <laughs> we go, we don't need to have prayer time on, on Saturday evenings. We don't need to read our Bibles. We don't need to pray. We don't need to go out there and knock door. Hey, nobody we're talking to is coming in anyway. Hey, look, look out there. Do you see anybody that we knocked on our door today? Do you, do you see anybody that, that we talked to yesterday in the service today? No. But Miss Dottie and Sydney were here today. Amen. And uh, Lee and Trisha and Adriana were here today. And PJ and Brittany were here today. <laughs> we didn't knock on their doors. God sent them. Amen. You see, we need to get to pass this. It's not us doing the work. It's God doing the work. And if we get on this high horse of, hey, hey, souls were saved last week and souls were saved this week and souls are going to be saved next week, don't be too sure. Do you realize we're having almost on Wednesday nights, we're having almost as many as we have on Sunday mornings? I mean, we're running in the 80s on Wednesday night. With spring break and, and, and folks that were sick and folks that were out of town, we were only down four. Actually, six from the week before and four from the week before that. We had 96 in the service today with time change. You go, really? Yeah, really. But we want to sit on our little pity horse and go, well, you know, they didn't ask me to pray today. Well, they, they didn't ask me to, to work the parking lot today. <laughs> I worked it last week. I was glad I worked it last week, not this week, because it's cold out there this morning. Besides being damp and wet. Well, he asked me. Do Why don't we get off our pity horse and realize it's not about me? Amen. It's about him. Right. You see, the Israelites said, oh, we got this. <laughs> we don't have, do you, if you follow along and you read through Joshua, every time they had a battle, the next thing they did is they went back to Gilgal and regrouped. And then they go out. But in this, in this case, after they had the victory at, at Ai, they, we don't need to regroup. We got this. Let's go on to Ai and boom. <laughs> I think it was 36 souls were, were killed. When nobody was killed in Jericho, nobody lost their life in Jericho. Oh, no. What's going to happen? What do we do? It's an interesting note. If you look, look at chapter number 7, verse number 10, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest, liest thou upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have stolen, also stolen, and, disassemb and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their stuff. When nothing happened in the church, the people began to get on their face before God. What happened? What happened? What happened? 
God says, it's not time for, it's time to get ready, get, get rid of the sin. It's time to start confession. It, it's time to get things right with God. Amen. You see, if we're going to have, if we're going to have God's blessings, you know, folks, I'll be honest with you. I'm not interested in building a church of 6,000. Breathe. It's okay. I am not interested in building a church of 6,000 or 10,000 or 20,000. By the way, I'm not interested in building a church of 100. Don't look at me like that. I haven't lost it. My one focus are lost sinners. And, I'm, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, I would lead everybody in Highlands to the Lord if I could and have none of them join my church. But don't you want them in the church? Oh, absolutely. I think that when, when <laughs> it's just my pet peeve to go and talk to somebody. I mean, we've had folks saved here, and, and, and then the, the, those that, are, that will not reach anybody for Christ, that will not share the gospel with, the, uh, with a person if their feet were in the flames of hell, but as soon as you win them, they're on them like white on rice. Oh, you've got to come to our church. <laughs> you stinking buzzard. Why didn't you get them when, they were, when they were, their feet were hanging over the pits of hell? Why didn't you drag them out? Why didn't you take care? Why didn't you share the gospel with? Them? Why do you want them now? After we've done the work, I mean that. I mean I, that bothers me. That really bothers me. That I and mean, you talk about getting my dander up. It gets and I use head and shoulders. I don't have a whole lot. Now, folks, I'm telling you that bothers. But I want to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want. To train them and teach them and, and, and do what Jesus tells us to do in Matthew 28. Go and teach and baptize and teach. Amen. That's what I think we ought to be doing. But the truth is, we've got to do it in God's way. In God's time. With God's currency. The problem in Jericho was they got it out of sorts. They got it. Oh, we did this. No. No. <laughs> we didn't do anything. Folks, four souls are saved in the last two weeks, plus ones are saved on the street. Yeah, somebody probably stood, sat at an altar, or kneeled at an altar, and prayed. Somebody went out and knocked on doors. Somebody went and gave out gospel tracts. Somebody uh, made a phone call. Somebody made a contact. It was God Amen. that did the work. Amen. It was God that took care of the business. He just used a worm to get his business done. You see, the last thing I want to share with you this evening is this. God's dealing with the children of Israel. Hey, Joshua, it's not time for prayer. It's time for getting things right. There's sin in the camp. There's a problem. You need to take care of the problem. Afterwards, God took care of Ai. And God gave, after they went back to Gilgal, after they, they, they regrouped, after they got things right with God, after they did all of that, then God says, hey, now then, let's take care of Ai. And they set up an ambushment. And the Aiites thought that they were going to do just like they did before. And they drew, came out of the city. Israelis surrounded them. Some went to the city and began to set it on fire. And God did the work. Folks, we need to let God work. We need to make sure that we are doing what God wants us to do.
You see, if there's sin in our life, we need to confess that sin. Amen. We need to get rid of that sin. If we're robbing from God, God's not going to bless. You, he, he doesn't bless a thief. How did we rob thee, Lord? <laughs> in tithes and offerings. You say, man, we had a victory offering. Yeah, but <laughs> are we going to have a victory offering next week? Are we going to be obedient next week? Or do we give all of our years in one day? Hey, if we're being disobedient and not reading the word of God and we're not praying and we're not soul winning and we're not, God's not going to bless. God's not going to bless. And I'll be honest with you. The message I had for tonight was not this message. It was a nice message. A really good message from Psalm 138. But God said, no. <laughs> no. See, we, we desire to have revival. We desire for God to work. We desire for God to do something in our hearts and lives, or we should. I'm praying for revival. I'm praying that God would work in my heart and my life. I, I, I'm praying that God would not allow anything in my life that would hinder the working of the Spirit of God in these services. I'm praying that God would not allow anyone to drive a wedge in between somebody and start a rocket. But Scott will tell you this is to be honest truth. Whenever God starts blessing, the devil gets involved and the church has a split. Now somebody tell me this morning, well, you know, Brother Lamb, we, we've lost so many people. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm, I can't really think of anybody. I can, think, I can see a lot of new faces out here. <laughs> I said, well, who did we lose? Well, I haven't seen so-and-so here. Oh, yeah. They moved to Louisiana. One person they named. One. We've lost so many people. You see, we, we, we focus on the trivial when we should be focusing on the majors. And the major is who's walking down this aisle to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Why am I going to uh, tr be trivialize somebody when the person doesn't even show up every week, doesn't even show up every service? And, and so many people, I'm going, wait, 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 time out. Time out. Lord, the devil is trying to discourage what's happening in this place. And I'm going to stand up and tell you, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. I want God to bless. I want God to work. I want God to do some, some miracles in hearts and lives. But it's going to take all of us being united in a united front for the cause of Christ. May we stand for prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. Lord, I just pray. I, I, I told you in prayer this afternoon, Lord, I... I I wasn't comfortable with this message, but, Lord, I felt like that this is the message, Lord, you wanted me to, to bring tonight. Lord, I, I just pray, Lord, I, I don't want to be a hindrance to your work. I don't want to be a hindrance to souls being saved and lives being changed. Lord, I don't want to be a hindrance to uh, families being put back together. I don't want to be a hindrance to, uh, to uh, men, young men and young ladies being, uh, being free from uh, from alcohol and drugs and, uh, and promiscuity and all of those things, Lord. I, I want to be a, a, a catalyst, Lord, that's going to draw them, that's going to bring them, Lord, to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, we, we, we tend to, fo to lose focus of the, of the right things. We tend to lose focus on the, uh, on the majors and, and minor on the, or major on the trivials and minor on the major. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, tonight to keep the right focus to do the right thing. I want to be able to say in 65 weeks from now that, that we've had someone saved in every service uh, over the last 67 weeks. Lord, I, I want to be able to say that it's been, been three years, five years, six years. Lord, I want to be able to say that we were faithful all the way through to your coming. 
and seeing souls saved and lives changed in the city of Baytown and Highlands and Crosby, Barbers Hill, Beach City Cove. God, I want to see folks saved. I, in order to, if it takes buses to, to Beaumont and, and buses to Houston and buses to, uh, to Huntsville, whatever it would take, Lord, to reach this lost and dying world, Lord, I'm willing. I pray that our folks are willing to do the things and do the right things to reach our, our community for Christ. Father, we ask this in the precious name of Jesus with our heads bowed.